Yone. What's up, Game Leapers? Coach Jizza back again. And if you're someone who plays Yone, who wants to play Yone, or who is learning Yone, then this video has all the information you will ever need. Guys, we're going to be covering in detail tips and tricks, your abilities, your combos, your trading patterns, your runes, your builds, legit everything. Even if you don't play Yone, I'm going to persuade you to, because not only is this video red hot, Yone is also one of the strongest Season 11 champions on the Rift. On the topic of being strong, the Game Leap website is the strongest learning resource of them all, which you guys have to check out. If you want to master a champion, master a role, master macro, whatever it is, we have it. So join thousands of your fellow summoners and get signed up for a bit more jizz in your life. Links as always in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it. We're going to start with your passive, your abilities. And in here, guys, we're also going to throw in some red hot tips and tricks, the combos, all the things you need to know mechanically on Yone to pop off. Now your passive, Way of the Hunter, has two innate passives. And the first is what makes Yone so strong at the moment. So your intent passive multiplies your critical strike chance from items by one and a half. So with just two crit items, you get 100% crit. And this is important to keep in mind for later and any excess crit you have so over 100% is converted into AD so you don't have to worry about over capping. Now your second innate passive is steel and spirit and you have probably noticed by now that you carry two swords as Yone. Well your first sword, steel sword, is what you attack with first and your other sword, the Asakana sword, deals both physical and magic damage. So even if the enemy is stacking armor, you can still be effective without building armor penetration. Right now for your basic abilities guys, your Q is mortal steel and you want to be maxing this first and skilling this at level level 1 in all matchups and we'll get into why a little later. So when you Q, you take a jab with your sword in the target direction and it deals physical damage. Your Q's cast time and cooldown can be lowered the more attack speed you build, so this is why building attack speed early on is so crucial. But the key here is that your Q applies on hit and on attack effects, so life steal and crit both trigger, as do press the attack, conquer and fleet footwork. Now with this form of your Q, you want to be using this to harass melee champions when they go for CS and getting this at level 1 gives you the chance to push the way so you get level 2 first. And you never know, a kill might just be around the corner if you hit this spike. And you can also use it to CS yourself from range so you don't get chunked by ranged champions early on. You would also want to do this if the enemy champion had some sort of advantage in lane as well, whether that be through items, health, levels. Now one little tip here is that most Yone players just Q and that's it, and this is the most prevalent against melee champions, and this is fine of course, but the best combo and something you should always look to do is to auto attack and then Q. This maximizes your DPS and enhances your trading potential. Now if you're the one with serious kill opportunity, you can catch your opposite number off guard by Q flashing, and this is really effective because yeah, it is close to impossible to react to. Now when you hit an enemy, so a champion, jungle monster, minion, you gain a stack of gathering storm. Now when you do this twice within 6 seconds, the next time you Q, you dash forward to wherever your cursor is, and unleash a whirlwind that deals damage and knocks up enemies hit. Now this is when you are at your deadliest because your whirlwind Q, let's call it, is essentially a gap closer that gives you a chance to trade with or all in any champion you're up against. In lane though, it's important to understand that you don't have any legit escape before level 6 without your whirlwind. So when you whirlwind in guys, you have to be sure the enemy jungler is not nearby ready to gank you because you will die. So in saying this, it's a good idea to hold onto your whirlwind because it creates pressure in the lane. You know, the enemy champion doesn't want to take free damage, so they'll back off. And if you do all of a sudden get ganked or engaged on, you can simply whirlwind away. Now keep in mind that because your third Q is a knockup, you can interrupt certain abilities like Riven's third Q, Zerath's Q and ultimate, Nunu's ultimate, a bunch of mechanics. Now if we flip this around and create a situation where you're getting a gank, it's generally better to wait for your jungler to apply the crowd control before using your whirlwind because it's then guaranteed to land. What you can also do is queue the minions to get two stacks of your gathering storm and you're ready to follow up your teammates engage. But what if your jungler doesn't have any real CC, like an Evelyn or Nidley? Well you can combine your whirlwind with your flash and this makes it a lot harder to dodge for the enemy. Like your whirlwind's animation is actually kind of slow, so if you can shorten that distance it has to travel by flashing beforehand, this is just a must master combo. Now if you want to impress your e-girl or your friends guys, check this out. So you're rarely going to use this combo, but it would be valuable at early game skirmishes, and the key to it is knocking both targets up so you allow your jungler or teammate to land some big AoE. So when you whirlwind, you are flashing beyond the second target so the damage and knockup hit both. Using your flash too early and before the second target, nothing happens. Using it too late, again nothing happens, the knockup won't take effect, so make sure you perfect this with practice before smurfing in ranked. Now in terms of whirlwind spots, you know areas of the map you can queue over like walls and terrain, there are many and you can use these to get to a fight quicker, to escape a fight, or to clear camps quicker if you want to upset your jungler. So make sure when you finish the jungle camp guys you have your queue stacked and over you go to the next camp. Right, I reckon we're due for another ability now, so let's talk about Yone's 
W Spirit Cleave and you want to skill this at level 2 but max this last. So when you press W, you deal both physical and magic damage because you cleave in the target direction with your Azagana Sword and you also get a shield based on your bonus AD, your level and how many champions you hit. So the more champions, the bigger the shield. So this is great for trading because not only do you deal damage at a decent range, you also protect yourself from your opponent's damage because of the shield. So ideally, you want to be using this in lane when the enemy champion is moving up about to deal damage to you. So this might be an Orianna throwing her ball at you or a Zed throwing his shadow out or a Fizz about to land from his E. Timing this correctly is very important. Now you can also use your cleave to shove waves, just make sure to hit every minion, not just a few. Now like your Q, you can also W flash and this achieves the same goal executing a low health target quickly, but it's best if you combine both abilities with your flash for maximum damage. So Q, flash, W. And if you needed to, you can also auto attack and ignite immediately. Very useful combo. Now let's move on to Yone's E, Soul Unbound. And you want to get this at level 3 and max this second. Now yes, you can get this at level 2 if you think you can kill your opponent, but majority of the time you want to take this a level later. So when you E, you dash towards your cursor and leave behind a clone of yourself which you are tethered to. You can think of this like Zed's Death Mark Shadow, so you can return to it when you reactivate your E. The important thing is here guys, unlike Zed's Death Mark, you will always, always Always return to your clone's position no matter what, unless you die. So if you don't press E again within 5 seconds, you are sent back to your clone's position automatically. So when you use your E in lane, do not think of it as an escape, because it isn't. Smart enemies will wait where your clone is until you recast your E and just kill you when this happens. It's like when you feed a bunch of ducks one tiny bit of bread, they just go nuts over it. So if you think you're getting ganked or you're losing lane heavily, you can just use your E from afar, from underneath your tower let's say, knowing that you will be safe when you go back to it, and this is an essential concept on Yone and we'll get into this more in just a second. So during this tether to your clone, you gain bonus movement speed and you apply marks to enemy champions you damage with your autos and abilities. So this is also like death mark and when you return to your clone, your marks detonate dealing true damage. Now can you see this red mask above this dummy's head? This is telling you that this target has a mark on them because you damage them and this will turn black if the mark is going to kill that target. So there's no need to keep chasing them down when you see the black mask. Lots of Yone players guys will keep chasing an already dead target and die themselves so remember this. This. Now once you get some attack speed and can throw in a few Qs while you're in your E spirit form, you are very scary indeed because the more marks you can apply, the more damage the detonation will deal. Now I also want to point out that when you reactivate your E to go back to your clone, you are displacement immune and it also acts as a cleanse. So any heavy crowd control and a few other forms of CC are removed. For example, if an Amumu uses his ultimate as you begin your E, you can evade the stun. If you're drowsied and you're about to fall asleep, you can E as well and you're cleansed. Now you can also use your E in lane and in fights to dodge enemy skill shots, but again, you have to be careful of getting surrounded by enemies when you go back to your clone. So only do this in lane when you know it's just a 1v1 or in fights when you have your teammates backing you up. Now there are a bunch of combos you have to master the style of your E guys, but the good thing is we've already touched on them. So remember the Q flash combo? You can do the same, but just start the combo off with your E. This will be ideal when you're super far away from your opponent and you need to close that space ASAP. You can do exactly the same thing with your W as well. So E, Q flash, W, and remember the auto attack and ignite if you need them. Now this next combo is your bread and butter trading pattern, and though the actual combo itself is important, the key to it is using your abilities in harmony. So your Q, W, and E are off cooldown and ready to use together. So you're eating forward and whirlwinding instantly. This covers that ground very quickly and allows you to get in free damage as the enemy is knocked up. So to land this on a regular basis in a 1v1, try to time it as your opponent is about to last at a minion or is using an ability of their own. So think of a Zeraf Q for example. Then if you're close enough as it lands, you can start by auto attacking and then Wing so you can keep auto attacking and queuing when it's back up because of your shield and this is also crucial. You have to judge whether it's more beneficial to E back to avoid the enemy's damage or CC or to W their burst and keep trading if you think you can win the trade even harder. So sometimes you would want to E back after you engage and other times you would want to hold on to it to apply more marks. Like with your Q thrust guys, you can also use flash as part of this whirlwind combo as well. And you can cover half of the mid lane with this so this is great for setting up ganks or going for an all in. It's also a pog idea to stack your whirlwind after you E the first time so that when you return to that original location, you can whirlwind again. So you can re-engage if you wanted to, you can disengage straight away. Otherwise you can be vulnerable. Now you can E over terrain like you can with your whirlwind but it's a lot shorter. So sometimes 
some spots you can whirlwind over, you can't E over. Now throughout a game when fights start happening, it's a red hot tactic to E over terrain when you want to make a play because your clone is in a safe position and you can create some insane angles to attack your opponents from. It's like you're flanking them without being detected. And one last tip, if you want to shove a wave and recall as fast as possible, you can E from a position of safety. For instance, this might be behind your minion wave or over a wall. Q an auto attack and W the wave and then reactivate your E so you can instantly B. You're not wasting any time walking back to a safe position because you've already created it. Right, time for your ultimate guys, Fate Sealed. And if you're enjoying the guide thus far, let the Jizz and Co know by leaving a like down below. So when you press R, yes, you create a magic carpet, I'm going to call it. And if an enemy champion is along this carpet and you can see the range is pretty big, so you can sometimes just ulti the enemy mid lane to start your combo. But yeah, you deal damage, of course. You knock them up and stun them for a second. You also end up behind that champion. And one of the main benefits of landing your ultimate is that you can land your Q while the target is CC'd. And the later the game goes, you can obliterate pretty much anyone because you are Q, auto, and Q again, and there's no chance they survive. Even in the early game, this is huge. But what happens if you don't hit an enemy champion with the carpet? Well, you then blink to the end of the carpet, so if you're going for an all-in or an engage, it's best to E first, so you have a get out of int free card in case you do miss your R or get in trouble. Also, you can use this to escape ganks in sticky situations. Just remember that you need clear air to do it. If an enemy champion is in the way, there's a 99% chance you still die. So if you have to flash to create that space before ulting, do it. Now you can also use your fate sealed over terrain just like your Q&E, but it is much longer and you can see some of the six spots you can use in your games. Essentially, if your ultimate's range is past the halfway point of a wall or structure or whatever it is, you will end up on the other side like I do here. If the tip of the carpet isn't past halfway, then I pull out a headbutt. And yeah, I probably get reported for looking like a first time Yone, so don't cuck yourself like this in your games. Now in terms of comboing, using your ultimate with your teammate's CC is obviously one way of maximizing its potential because it's guaranteed to land. Speaking of CC, you also have some in the form of your whirlwind knockup, so one effective way of synergizing your abilities is to use your whirlwind and then Ring immediately. Remember, after you whirlwind guys, you can't Q straight away because it's on cooldown, so using your ultimate buys you time to then Q when it comes off cooldown as that enemy champion is knocked up. So your most consistent combo with all your skills is to E, whirlwind Q, R, Q, auto attack, W. And yes, if they aren't already dead, you can auto attack and ignite. It's very important to weave in auto attacks between your abilities, guys, because it optimizes your damage output, especially with Conqueror. You know, you don't want to be leaving anything on the table. Now, one cool trick is that you can actually extend your ease duration. So remember, this is usually five seconds with your ultimate. So as soon as your soul unbound is about to expire and you're about to snack back to your clone, press R to stay out longer. So if you're 1v1ing someone and they don't have that black mask above their head, you know your marks aren't going to kill them. So you you can use your ultimate to finish them off because it extends that E duration and adds a mark of damage. Very handy. Now if you're turret diving someone or trying to get into a fight, E from safety and cast your ultimate straight away if the enemy champion is 1 HP and you don't need the damage, or you can hold onto your ultimate so you can land it with your whirlwind, or try to land it when the target uses their escape. The thing is guys, when you're holding onto your fate seal, you are creating pressure. Sometimes using it really early on in a fight, especially when the opponent is max HP, is the bad play. So don't just throw yourself in there for the sake of it. I also want to point out that you cannot R flash. You have to flash before pressing R and this is another good way of capitalizing on CC'd enemies or just a bit of engage from a malfight for example. It's the quickest way of getting in there so make sure you have this in your locker. Now something else you should have in that locker of yours is a Game Leap subscription so this is the Jizz's final call to all of you to sign up to the Game Leap website to get exclusive access to our champion courses, guides, videos, fun analyses. Like guys it is legit the only resource you need to climb and improve. Links down below. Okay let's finish off by talking about your runes and builds on Yone, and these are very nuanced, so if you're to become a Yone master, you have to understand the theory behind all of them. So the first room page, take this into hard early game matchups, like Zed, like Viz, like Ari, like Annie. Fleet Footwork, Second Wind, and Revitalize give you the sustain and anti-poke you need to survive the first five minutes because these lanes are oppressive and hard to play against. The other option is to take Fleet again, but instead of the Resolve Tree, you take Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter from the Domination Tree, which gives you more scaling. In both cases, you want to start Door and Shield. Now in easier lanes where you can win early and potentially kill your opponent, you have two options. You can take Press the Attack, which gives you the most kill pressure early on, or you can take Conqueror, which is the best scaling keystone you have, and this is one of the reasons why late game Yona is impossible to beat. You don't have that much power early on with Conqueror, so again, take this in lanes that are more passive, knowing that you can essentially scale for free. With PTA or Conqueror, take Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter, start with a Doran's Blade, and in every room page, guys, make sure you take Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist depending on the matchup. 
up. Now, in terms of the rest of your items, four of your items are going to be the same in every game. So you want to be rushing Berserker's Grease, then your Mythic item, then Infinity Edge, and then Bloodthirster. The 35% attack speed from Berserker's Grease reduces the cooldowns on your Q and W, unless you auto attack more, of course, so this is your first purchase. Next, you need to decide which Mythic is more worth in the game you're in. Now, Immortal Shield Bow is by far the most consistent of the three, as in it will be useful and honestly just broken in every single game because you have enough attack speed and attack damage to be the biggest force on the map, but also the sustain and lifesteal is where it really separates itself as the go-to mythic. If you are snowballing though and you want to have a bit of fun while you win, you can buy Kraken Slayer. This is going to give you the most damage out of any mythic and your Q counts as a stack too, or you can opt for Gale Force which gives you a lot of outplay potential and an extra dash which you can integrate into your combos. So you can E, Gale Force, Whirlwind Q and then ulti, and you've gone from your base to the enemy Nexus. No, but seriously guys, you can throw in Gale Force as active with pretty much anything and it will work wonders. So it's up to you, but Shield Bow is definitely the better option. So you get Infinity Edge next because this gives you 100% crit due to your passive, which we talked about, and your crits deal more damage because of IE's passive. Next item, Bloodthirster, which gives you more crit, which remember gets transferred into AD, and it also gives you an absurd amount of life still, and a shield which you already get from your W, so it might seem like overkill, especially if you get a Shield Bow, but it really isn't. It's just busted, that's what it is. You become unkillable. Now for your last two items, guys, this is where you have the final say, and it depends on what you need to win that game. So I'm going to give you guys six options here. So the first one is Mortal Reminder, and you want to be building this into teams with a ton of healing. The second, Death Stance, you want to be building this into bursty AD comps, so if the enemy team has a Zed and Kha'Zix, for example. Next, you have a Wit's End, which gives you AD, attack speed, and enough magic resist to negate the effect of bursty AP damage dealers like Viz and Elise, and the on hit is great too. The fourth item you can choose is a Mercurial Scimitar for the QSS, so if you're against a team with heavy CC and magic damage, this is arguably a must buy. Now, the penultimate choice you have is Guardian's Angel, and this lets you go for more risky plays onto the enemy backline in late game teamfights, and the armor lets you tank a bit more damage. And the final choice, guys, you have is Spirit Visage, and it may sound whack, but the passive is actually OP on Yone against the right comp. So if the enemy team has a bunch of magic damage, chuck this on, and your healing and shielding is at the point where you can 1v5. So guys, take these runes, these builds, these tips, all of this information into your games on Yone, and you will kill it in Season 11. Any questions or thoughts on the guide, feel free to have a type in the comments. This has been Coach Season, and until tomorrow's up, blah, blah, blah.